Hello, so this research, I'm very proud of it and very passionate about it, and I've applied it for longer than 10 years after I did the master's in basically in human development, and then how you develop a model then using those levels of stage progression in terms of developmental and humanistic psychology, as well as other forms of consciousness, as well as psychology and build a model for leadership. So who the best people would be, depending on the context, at leadership for society, for creating a flourishing society economically, as well as for human, human flourishing and potential. And so this model really looked at developmental psychology was really the winner here, more than humanistic psychology because of the framework and the testing and the empirical ins instruments that can be used actually to evaluate it. And theories on adult development provide us with a very plausible and useful framework for understanding human development and then based on the level of stage progression in terms of character consciousness and developmental progress, whether that person would be a good leader in transformational change or in situations of uncertainty or even in status quo. So descriptions of higher development agree that more developed ind individuals will indeed possess unique skills like a high degree of self-awareness, an ability to analyze situations from multiple per perspectives and the highest ones would likely be very high in strategic foresight and systems thinking, an openness to learning from experience, a high toleration of ambiguity. So these people don't go crazy when there's no structure rules or when the problem cannot be solved and you need to go to the unthinkable. An ability to operate from a set of personally generated values, not necessarily conformist values. So this type of person, when there's an ethical issue or when there's something that has definite financial consequences or human impact, this type of person has a very high level of moral reasoning and will be able to acknowledge, take accountability and see the risks in moralistic type of decisions that could create very serious public relations scandals or financial losses. Now, Cook Gruder, one of the experts in developmental, Keegan and Torbert have argued that adults at higher stages of development are in a unique position to make valuable contributions to the field of education, organizational management, and social leadership because of their mature insight and intellectual flexibility. Now, the research that I did found that as people progress to the highest levels of cognitive and developmental, through developmental psychology stage progression, and there were updated models that were way better than the previous models that are still, in fact, being used. So some of these models really describe the highest functioning individuals and about 0.54% of individuals actually get to the top. And that's when you're at peace with everything, including your unconscious psyche. So that takes an enormous amount of work. Or people that have experienced severe deprivation, trauma, and still always found a way to rewire their mind to a higher level, reach that potential faster than people that don't experience disruptions in their life, trauma, or other occurrences. So you can actually skip levels in development. And so that's why when I looked at Abraham Lincoln, after he experienced nervous breakdowns, severe trauma and failure, eventually he became successful and incredibly resilient. And so these are the qualities of leadership when we go through an intense work on character development to get to the highest levels. Now, the problem with getting to these higher levels is as I said, the highest level 0.54% of people get there. Probably about in top 8%, all the really unique, independent, autonomous people with high moralistic and complex reasoning abilities who would be the best leaders may not want to be in leadership. The other issue is when you are on these higher levels, 
there are less people for you to connect with. So you may find that your reasoning, your thinking style, that you're only capable of being around people that are, you know, on, a, on that level. And so it can be a very lonely journey. So sometimes it's better to stay at a, just a conscientious level of development in one lifetime, and then you have a lot of friends. So this stage progression and developmental psychology really allows us to have a dynamic understanding of the process of change and human evolution. And that was my research. How do we get and coach people to get to the highest level, or at least identify what level they wanna be on? Research on adult development has demonstrated that as individuals develop their thinking to a higher level, they progress to higher levels in character development, Moral, moral intelligence, emotional intelligence, and even cognitive intelligence. From the simple and concrete to the more complex and abstract type of thinking, that is very difficult to do when you're not developed on that level. And that's why sometimes trauma or certainly having difficult circumstances in life, experiencing scarcity, can really jolt the brain to a higher level of development if you're doing meditation, if you're working on Buddhist psychology to rewire the mind to a higher level, then your level of complexity in thinking, reasoning, insight, as well as making decisions is like absolutely at an incredible level is what I experience. So to a larger amount also of an ability with strategic foresight of peripheral scanning. And so here they speak about a large amount of specificity and precision in thinking. Stereo from you, in order to progress to the higher levels, you have to move from stereotypical and dogmatic toward greater openness to experience. So when you put people in all these boxes or create these categories for people, it really shows that you're on a level, a lower level of developmental progress. And so that's why you know, di accepting diversity, diverse thoughts, diverse minds. It goes further than just our physical bodies. There are diverse minds. And so this is why it needs to be welcomed. And it dem people that are stuck in stereotypical roles usually or have a lot of dogma and structure around how people need to behave because it's the fluidity that creates innovation and expands the mind cognitively, emotionally, and even from an innovative standpoint to a higher level. From a, we move from a desire for certainty to a tolerance of ambiguity, uncertainty, and change. From directed, externally generated standards to what's called self-directed and self-generated standards. And so a lot of these leadership scales and instruments, some of them can actually evaluate whether people are aggressive, defensive, passive, uh, defensive, passive, aggressive, or whether or not they are self-actualizing. And so a person who's self-actualizing is achievement-oriented, is not competing with colleagues or other team members. You're competing with yourself. And so you're limiting yourself if you're competing with your colleagues or other people because you're not reaching your full potential because what you've done is put a rate-limiting step on it. But when you focus on your potential and who you are, then without competing, but with achievement orientation, which isn't about beating the other person, and you'll never ever go to the furthest level. You'll never become in the top three, if you think like that. So always competing with yourself and creating milestones to beat yourself. And that beating yourself usually is, by the time you get to a certain point, for me, it was automatically beating it you beat everybody else because they weren't functioning on that model but uh, so that so these are the types of developmental progress tools and instruments and pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone facing fear embracing the uncertain the highly disruptive and what really triggers us to change to a higher level that's what develops character development that's what gets us to the highest levels of human functioning and based on these levels of human functioning, people have more self-awareness, more tolerance, more diverse, complex thinking. They're, they can scan the periphery better, better self-awareness towards others, interpersonal relations, maturity, groundedness, stability, resilience, 
So that's why we would want to get to the higher level. But if we do get there, there aren't many people there that we can hang out with. So just remember, it could be a lonely place.